Hello, my name is Chanel Matanda Manfo. I'm going, this talk is about the paper Quantum Access Security of the Vintanese Wine Time Signature Scheme. This is a joint work with Christian Mayens and Maris Oson. The main purpose in this talk is to prove the security of the Vintanese Wine Time Signature in the Quantum Handle Oracle model in a situation where an adversary has bought access quantum access to the signing oracle and to a random oracle. We do this by using the approach by Allergic AI. Along the way, we develop a superposition hash chain, a tool for analyzing hash chain in the quantum random oracle model. We do this based on the superposition oracle techniques by, by Zandri. So let's start with a short introduction. We first define what a digital signature scheme is. A digital signature scheme is an asymmetric cryptographic primitive that is used to validate the authenticity and the integrity of a message. So suppose a sender, Alice, wants to send a message in a way that is not altered through its transmission to a verifier Bob. What she does, she prepares a pair of keys, a secret key that she kept private and the public key that she publishes. Then she used the secret key to sign, to sign her message, and then she sent both the message and the signature to Bob. Now, what happens if there is an active act adversary in the channels of transmission? In that case, we don't know if the message and the signature Bob sent to Bob are still are correct. So, according to the way uh, the security of digital signature scheme is handled. We distinguish several types of digital signature schemes. But in this talk, we restrict ourselves to hash based signatures whose security is based on the properties of cryptographic hash functions. As examples of hash based signatures, we have the Landport signature, the Vintenis signature, and the Merkel signature. Now, we first describe, explain some basic concepts of compute, quantum computing that are useful to the understanding of the remaining of the talk. So in quantum mechanics, qubits are represented by vectors in a two-dimensional vector space, complex vector space, where the basic states are ket zero. This notation is simply the Dirac notation, the way of representing classical vectors. So like cat zero is simply the vector which, where the first entry is one and zero is the second entry. So the general way of the general state in a, a two-dimensional vector space is described by a unit vectors as a linear combination of complex numbers alpha and beta that fulfill the condition that the square and sum to one. So for a general case of qubits, let's say an n qubit state, is simply a superposition over all the basis vectors in C to the n. And he has, his expression is given as follows, well, where the alpha x add amplitudes and the, they are complex numbers and fulfill the condition that this, they square and sum to one. You can think of a superposition simply as a state that is simultaneously in all the basis vectors of C to the N. When all the alpha X are equal to one over square root of two to the N, we say that we have a uniform superposition whose expression is given as follow. So when we have a quantum state, two main things can happen to it. It can change over time if we apply it to it a uniform a unitary transformation. We can also extract information from a quantum state by measuring it. When we measure a quantum state, it collapses to one of the basic vector, basis vector. And we say that we get X with probability al alpha norm square of alpha X. So for instance, if we measure the, the plus state given as follow in the basis Cat zero, cat one, we get outcome zero or one each with probability one alpha. And the state collapses into 
the basis state gets zero if, for instance, we get outcome zero. One other important notion to consider, especially when dealing with algorithms, is the notion of oracle. An oracle is a black box access to a function. So when, what we mean by quantum accessible oracle is an oracle is a superposition black box that can evaluate to a function that can evaluate on superposition of inputs as well as so, and is providing a, an oracle for a unitary operation. So this means that if we, if, if we, we apply a function to a superposition of input X, we get the, the, the data evaluate the function simultaneously on all, all the inputs and give this result. So now that we know a bit about quantum computing, we move on and describe the security of data signature scheme. So the, we recall that the most common attacks attack against digital signature schemes is the chosen message attack, which is as follows. We have a pop, an adversary who has a public key and choose some messages and send them to the signing oracle, which reply with the signature, the corresponding signature. And the adversary can do this a plausible number of times and use the information to produce a classical forgery message. So we said that such an adversary succeed if the message it come out with is different from all the queries messages and the signature on that message is valid. We refer to such and security as the existential unforgeability on the adaptive chosen message attacks. Now, what happens if an adversary has quantum access to the signing function? So that means instead of querying message, classical messages, the later queries messages in uniform superposition and receive signature also in, sorry, the, the later queries messages in superposition and queries also and receive signature also in superposition. Then he used that information to come out with a classical forgery. In that case, it's, it's clear that it's difficult to distinguish between the classical message and the and, and the queries messages, then the notion of fresh forgery is unclear. In that case, the EU, the existential unportability on the chosen message attack is no longer meaningful. So to address those limitations, some quantum definition has been developed. We have the Boni and Zandri security, the one-time unforgeability security, and the blind unforgeability security which is the base of this work and which will be described in detail. So the idea of the blind unforgeability is to check if the fresh forgery is, if the forgery is fresh or not in a quantum case. So to do that, the approach, we can achieve that by granting an adversary with a blinding sign oracle rather than the normal sign oracle. So what we mean by blinding sign oracle is that we, we choose a subset of messages in the message space for which if an adversary queries a message belonging to that set, we does not, the blind sign oracle does not provide a signature. But, and then we ask the adversary to find valid signatures for messages in the blinding set. More, formal, more formally, the blind sign oracle is defined as follows. So when you receive an input message M, it checks if the message is in the blinding set, it does not provide a signature. Otherwise, it provides a signature for that message. So the blind unforgeability notion of security is based on the following experiment. The blind forge experiment, which consists of the, the following step. The first is the key generation on input of the security parameter. A pair of key, keys is generated. The next step is the blinding set. So we select the blinding set by choosing, by putting independently at random with probability epsilon, some messages in the subset B. We note that epsilon is declared by the adversary at the beginning of the experiment. The next step is, the, is to produce the forgery. We allow an adversary to, to do a quantum chosen message and then 
come out with a classical forgery. The last step is to check if the forgery is valid, in which case the, we output one, otherwise we output zero. We say that a digital signature scheme is blind and forgeable if for every adversary A with a blinding sign oracle, the probability to, of winning the blind forge experiment is negligible in the security parameter N. So now we move on and describe the Vintenis one time signature scheme. The Vintenis one time signature scheme consists of three algorithms. The first is the key generation. So for this variant of the Vintenis one time, the, the key generation is generated in a form of a hash chain, whereby the first level is the private key and the last level is the public key. So to generate the private key, we choose the, the string of the private key are generated independently at random in this domain. And now we apply, we evaluate the a random function W minus one times to each string of the private key to get the public key. And we recall that W is the Vintenis parameter. Now, the next algorithm is the signature generation. Here, this, the signature is obtained by first encoding the original message in blocks, each of which is, is represented in W-based representation. And then we compute the checksum, which is a verification step. And then we also split it in blocks, each of which is encoded in W-based representation. And now to get the, the blocks of the message, we, we concatenate the blocks of the original message and, that of, and those of the checksum. The key property of the checksum, so the, the checksum has a nice property that if you compute the block of a message M, and then you compute the blocks of a message M prime that is different from M, then there exists at least one position at which one of the block, one of the blocks of the message M prime is smaller than the block, than one of the blocks of the message M. That is to say that the blocks of a message are large, when the blocks of the message are large, then the blocks of this checksum are small and conversely. Once the message is encoded in block, to get the signature, we simply evaluate the random hash function bi time to each string of the secret key. And to verify the signature, we evaluate the hash function w minus one minus bi time to each string of the signature. If we get the corresponding public key, then we say that the signature is valid. Now that we know what a De Vinteni signature is, we go on and prove its security in the quantum random oracle model. We first recall a previous record, uh, result. Allergic et al. show that the, the land port one time signature is blind and forgeable in the quantum random oracle model. So in this work, we, we, we generalize the approach they use to prove the, the security of the land port OTS to prove the security of the Vintenis one time signature scheme. Our main result is the following theorem. The Vintenis one time signature is blind and forgeable if the use hash function is modeled as a quantum accessible random oracle. That is to say that the success probability of any blind unforgeability adversary against the Vintenis one time signature that makes Q quantum queries to the random oracle is bounded by the following bound, where CW is a constant, Q is the number of queries of quantum queries, A is the message left, W is the Vintenis parameter, and N is the security parameter. To prove this theorem, we first execute the modified blind forge experiment that we described below, and then we examine the adversarial success probability. So how do we modify the blind forge experiment? Well, we know that the blind, in the blind forge experiment, the secret key is only used by the blind sign oracle. So in our analysis, we can modify the key generation the random oracle algorithm and the blind signing oracle algorithm 
and offer to these people of a quantum independent world. So we can do those modifications as long as the triple is indistinguishable from the real world to the view of an adversary. So how do we exactly modify the triples? So for the key generation, we first recall that in the classical setting, the, each string of the secret key is generated independently at random. And then we evaluate a hash function successively to get the public key. But in our analysis, we prepare the secret key and all the hash chain, intermediate hash chain, hash chain in uniform superposition. And then we generate the public key independently at random. Then we reprogram our random oracle in such a way that it is consistent with our hash chain. So this is how the superposition oracle is defined. And this is just a mathematical way to, to write our hash chain, our hash chain. So now we move on and describe the behavior of our blinding sign oracle and our random oracle. For our random oracle, when it receives a, an input X, it checks if the input is equal to one of the hash chain elements. If that's the case, the random oracle answers the query with the hash, next hash chain elements. That is, it applies a C naught from its next element to the input. So if X happens to be equal to multiple hash chain elements, for, if, for every such element, a C naught is applied from its next element to the output. If X is greater, if X is different from the whole hash chain, then the random function, a random function is applied to the input X. Now, when it comes to the blinding sign oracle, I explain, as explained above, if it checks whether a message is blinding of, or not, if the message is not blinded, it answers the query by applying a C naught from all the hash chains elements corresponding to the blocks of the message to the output. So we were able to show that our quantum independent world is indistinguishable from the real world to the view of an adversary. More precisely, we prove the following theorem. We said that if P and Q are the output distributions over n bit strings, of an algorithm interacting with the real world and the quantum independent world respectively. Then the distance between the two distributions is upper bounded by the following expression. Since n is the security parameter, it is quite large. And since W is constant and L is polynomial in n, in n, this expression happens to be negligible, meaning that the two distributions are closed. Now let's move on and, and explain the, our technique. So here we, we focus on the techniques we, the adversary used to produce the classical forgery. So we allow our quantum adversary to, to query the random oracle a polynomial number of times and then query the signing oracle once. Then it can also query the random oracle again a desired number of times and use all those information to come out with the classical forgery. And the last step will be to check the correctness of the forgery. So because of the time restriction, we focus on the interaction on explaining the interaction of the adversary with the blinding sign oracle. So in the interaction of the the adversary with the blinding sign oracle. The adversary prepare, prepares a superposition messages and requests the signature. Once the blinding sign oracle receives the, the, the input, the letter answer the query with the superposition of message of signatures. The adversary uses those information, those signatures to come out with his classical message and signature pair. This is how the false signature looks like. So this is just the mathematical way of describing the interaction of the adversary with the blinding sign oracle. So the, when the adversary provides the forgery, 
The next step is to check the correctness of the forgery. If the message is blinded, we go on and check if the signature is valid. But since we are interested in proving the security of the Vintenis one time signature scheme, we want the, the first signature to be independent of the hash chain, meaning that the adversary only has negligible probability to produce a valid sign, a, a valid first signature. So for that, our key argument is that in the classical setting, the part below the hash, the, the query position, the part of the hash chain below the query position is not used to produce the signature. So if J, G is the query position, the part of the hash chain below is on you, so it's still in the initial state. But we also know that since the blinded sign oracle only queries messages, only queries on blinded messages, since our first message is blinded, it's different from the message, from the query message. So by the property of the checksum, there exists at least one position at which the blocks of the first message is smaller than the block of the query messages. This means that the question relevant for that position B I star is still in initial state. So it's still in uniform superposition, meaning that it's uniformly random. This means that the, the first signature is independent of that hash chain element and therefore is independent of the hash chain. So to do this, to find this position, we make use of the partial measurement. Why do we perform the partial measurement of the hash chain? This is because in contrast to, class, to the classical case, in quantum setting, the query message is, in, is a superposition of messages. And that position can differ from one term of the superposition to the other position. So we want to find that position in uniform superposition. So after performing this partial measurement, we, the next step is to examine the adversarial success probability. And in our analysis, in contrast to the approach by Alagi et al, we we also we also look at the the effect of the partial measurement in the in the adversarial success probability since the partial measurement is not part of the blind forge experiment so as a summary of our work we develop a superposition hash chain which is a tool for analyzing hash chains in the quantum random oracle model and we use it as, as key ingredient in our analysis. We were also able to show that the interaction of the adversary with both oracles, that is the random oracle and the signing oracle, does not disturb too much the uniform superpositions of the hash chain. That means that the adversary learns only little information about the invariant part of the hash chain. And this implies that the first signature is independent of the Russian. So as a conclusion, we can say that an adversary making a moderate number of quantum queries to the random oracle and a single one to the signing oracle only has negligible success probability in breaking the security of the Vintenis one time signature scheme. We mentioned moderate number of queries because the we, we mentioned moderate number of query, quantum queries, because if you remember, our theorem depends on the number of quantum queries Q. So to achieve our result, we use the superposition oracle technique, the reprogramming oracle. We also make use of the measurement to find the position where one of the Russian elements relevant for the first signature is in state side. In the future, we would like to look at the security of multi-time signature, such as Merkel signature in the quantum random oracle models. It will also be nice if cryptographers can implement such types of theoretical quantum access security proof to check whether the bound, the theoretical bound is good enough. Thank you for your kind attention.